Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. And today's lesson number 102, I thought I'd do something interesting. I get a lot of questions every week, pretty much every day, um, from folks who listen to Software Architecture Monday. Maybe it was a particular conference or a training that I did. And these are great questions that I always get. So I thought I would do something interesting in this lesson and actually show and answer some of those questions because I'm guessing you have some of those as well. And in this lesson, I'm gonna answer some questions I've been receiving about architectural characteristics, those things we call illities. The first question uh, that I usually get on this, very frequent question, is um, can you list some of the common architecture characteristics? I mean, we talk about these illities, these non-functional requirements, system quality attributes, whatever you want to call them. I call them architecture characteristics. And a lot of times we don't know the whole list. And so here's a list of some of the common architecture characteristics. Now, there are literally hundreds of these, but some of them are pretty vague and hard to define. Uh, this is a list of some of the most common ones for you. As a matter of fact, taking a look at some of these, you can see where uh, there might be some overlap, you might think. For example, performance versus responsiveness. Now, fortunately, I've done a lot of other lessons uh, that relate to the definitions of these common characteristics. As a matter of fact, in lesson number 83, I talk about the differences between performance and responsiveness. When we talk about scalability and elasticity, this is another one of those confusing kind of things. How do we define each of those? Well, fortunately, in lesson 85, I actually talk about the differences between scalability and elasticity. As a matter of fact, I've got lessons on how to measure these as well if you look through the catalog. As a matter of fact, there's other ones such as testability, which I defined actually in lesson 82, and things like deployability, which I have a specific lesson for, which I defined in lesson 84. You know, for a lot of the other characteristics that you see here, uh, Neil Ford and I, in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, and specifically chapter four, um, take a very close look at all of these characteristics and offer some common definitions for most of those common ones. And you'll find that in chapter four of our book. But this is a very good question. And as a matter of fact, one that is uh, worthy of actually putting into this Q&A. Here's another one that I also frequently get both at conferences, trainings, as well as just through LinkedIn or email. And that is, Mark, uh, what is the most important architecture characteristic every system should focus on? Well, this one's actually a very easy one to answer because the answer, quite simply, is none of them. And this is an important concept to think about. Uh, when I choose to turn this question around and ask people, well, what do you suppose would be the number one characteristic we should focus on for most systems? Uh, usually the answer I get is performance. It's a very, very common one. As a matter of fact, uh, and I won't get on my soapbox, but I did come across an article that was a scathing article about the fact that not enough developers and architects focus on performance. And I thought it was a fairly poor article from that perspective because Performance isn't always the most important thing. Uh, let's suppose the business drivers here, when we ask the business stakeholders or project sponsors, um, what's important to you? Because that's where we derive the important and most important architecture characteristics. Suppose the business says, well, we're undergoing significant company acquisitions. Uh, we're in the acquisition business right now. We're concerned about the systems being able to handle this. This has nothing to do with performance, but rather things like scalability, interoperability, extensibility. These are what are important. As a matter of fact, suppose the company says or the business says, it is an absolutely positively imperative that we be able to react as fast as possible to get new features and bug fixes out to our users. 
Well, this has nothing to do with performance or interoperability. No, but rather overall agility, that maintainability, testability, deployability, and that level of modularity to isolate change. This is about time to market. And so you see, when we try to say, well, yes, but isn't there one that everybody should be concerned about? Uh, the answer is no, there's not. There are some core implicit architecture characteristics that we usually always try to strive for that are kind of behind the scenes. Things like, for example, maintainability, feasibility, security, reliability. Uh, these are things that we call implicit characteristics. We outline these in our book. They become explicit characteristics when, in fact, we have a need, for example, in this example you're seeing right here on the slide, um, maintainability goes from an implicit characteristic, something that, yeah, we'll take care of, to a driving factor that is critical to the success of the application. It won't work without it. You know, another question I get a lot is, Hey, what has, as a matter of fact, I just got this one yesterday. <laughs> what happens, Mark, if you identify the wrong kind of characteristics? I mean, will the system still work? And the answer, again, is easy for this one. No, it won't. And it's interesting. When we talk about systems working or not, sure, it may work functionally for a while, but it will eventually stop working. Let's say that system needs to scale and we choose the wrong kind of architecture or we have an architecture and choose the wrong characteristics. These architectures right here, the monoliths, won't scale, but microservices will. If we take a look at these star ratings, which are, by the way, in our book, each architecture style has strengths or weaknesses. If you choose the wrong architecture characteristics, it might lead you, for example, towards microservices right here. Uh, but then suppose that cost is our major factor or simplicity. Uh, we will fail. So it is imperative to understand these architecture characteristics to get them right by collaborating with the business, understanding those business drivers, and then translating those to those architecture characteristics. I think we have time for one more question, and that is, Mark, you talk all the time about limiting the number of characteristics to no more than seven. I mean, why seven? And also, what happens if I happen to have a system that requires more than seven? Well, let me answer this question here. Um, because with all the various characteristics, um, the problem is this. If you were to show this list to your business stakeholder or your project sponsor and explain all of these and say, which one's important to you? Well, I like, actually, I like this one, this one. I, I like almost all of them. That's the problem because you will never, ever find an architecture in this world or a solution that will solve every one of these characteristics together. Some of these are opposing forces. We use these to define and analyze our trade-offs. The converse is also true. If you define too few characteristics, you might not solve all of the business needs. And you might miss a lot. And also with just these two, I might not be able to make the right architecture decisions because there's too many choices now to solve both of these. You know, I get that number seven. It just kind of came to me, but it's interesting. There was a paper written in 1956 um, by George A. Miller um, called The Classics or the, the Magic Number Seven, um, plus or minus two. Our minds work this way. Uh, seven seems to be this magic number. Um, I will supply, by the way, all the links I'm showing here in the actual um, web page that this uh, video is on. Um, but the point is, I, I would encourage you to read this. It's quite an interesting psychological paper about the number seven. I personally have found uh, that anything more than seven, and I'm not able to actually define an architecture. 
Um, so sometimes I go to eight, sometimes I go to five. It, you know, it really depends on the context, but that's the reason I limit it. As a matter of fact, there's another reason, and that has to do with a ship called the Vasa. Now, I won't reiterate the story because I do in another lesson that I talked about early on, I believe it was around lesson 14 or so, about architectural trade-offs. But this ship was over-engineered. The architect tried to do too much, and what resulted was this ship sank to the bottom of the ocean. And the real story behind the Vasa is very fascinating. Here's three links for you. Um, I wrote about the story of the Vasa and how it links to architecture in the book 97 Things Every Architect Should Know. As a matter of fact, I happened to run across a GitHub repo that actually has the text from the book. I don't know if that was the original blog prior to the book being published, um, but that's the second link here if you want to go straight to chapter 22, uh, which is about the story of the Vasa. And of course, I provided the Wikipedia link here if you're really a history buff and really want to know the details about this ship. Um, but this is a valuable lesson about balancing the number of requirements and characteristics uh, together. Fantastic. So I kind of, you know, I, I really like this idea. I get a lot of questions and these are good questions. And I think I might um, kind of intersperse or continue some of this idea of taking various topics and really posing those questions and the corresponding answers that I do provide um, my listeners and folks that follow me and folks that I've trained or you know, consulting gigs I'm in that happen to have these questions. They're really cool. Anyways, please stay tuned to developer2architect.com where uh, these lessons are actually housed in Software Architecture Monday. And thank you so much for listening. This has been Lesson 102, uh, Architecture Characteristics Q&A. Um, throw some comments out there. Let me know what you think about this kind of format. Um, I kind of like it. I thought it was kind of fun. Um, Anyways, again, thank you so much for listening. Stay safe and stay tuned in two more Mondays for another lesson in software architecture.